Yes, I can. I can speak at length on that subject. I think it's a wonderful topic. Bhagavad Gita, as we're going just about to listen to, is a an exposition, an excellent exposition of the goal. He says, surrender your every action to God. Surrender the fruits of your every action to God. Remember that God is doing through you. You are not the doer, you are the tool in God's hand. And that is a very, very lofty sentiment, and it's a very high ideal of perfection, but a very difficult process to attain. Chandi is the path to the goal of Gita. Chandi says, if you're seriously intent upon subjugating the ego, sit in one asana. Keep your back straight. Breathe like this. Don't move your knees. Recite these mantras. Chant in this way. Chant the, the entire text in one asana and cut down with the sword of wisdom all the, the excesses born of egotism. Let the goddess come into your life and take away your too much and too little and put them in balance. Take down self-conceit and self-deprecation and silence the judges of the movies that we're watching in our meditations. And thereafter, surrender the great ego and all his armies at the feet of the goddess. Thereafter, Krishna can become the doer of all. And we become the clarity of pure devotion, which allows God to act through us. I believe that Chandi is the path, and Gita is the destination. Gita doesn't say, how do you surrender everything to God? He says, surrender. And surrender comes peace. Cultivate wisdom. Uh, Through wisdom you have the fullest devotion. Through devotion you pay attention. Through paying attention you become one with me. But he doesn't tell us how to do that. Chandi tells us how. She gives us a path and a step-by-step explanation of what to do first, what to do next, Gita, as we're about to read, is going to say, listen to one verse, one half a verse, one word, one syllable, one letter. Who recites even a a, a portion of this, a third portion, a sixth portion, one, one chapter? You're going to go to the highest heavens. Chandi says, sit down and read this book from cover to cover and don't move your knees until you're done. She's got a method. And that's what I can cognize as the distinction between Chandi and Gita. So, let us say that Chandi is sadhana and Gita is realization. You have to realize that you're the lover. You can't do sadhana to realize that you're a lover. You realize your mother. You do sadhana to make yourself worthy of realizing that you are the mother. Instead of sitting back on the sofa like a wallflower saying, poor me, nobody has asked me to dance. I'm waiting to be the beloved. Instead, we'll just get up on the dance floor and boogie and say, I am the lover. Any beloveds out there? (laughs) And that's the difference. It's a realization. So Gita makes us the lover. And Chandi prepares us and teaches us how to love. Gita says, be a lover. I heard that before. And still I'm waiting. Chandi says, if you want to be a lover, this is what you've got to do. 
So that's the distinction. 